Hi, I'm Tim again. I still have on the same shirt. <laughs> I'm Karen. <laughs> well, we're doing them back to back. So if you see a sprinkle around, we have the same clothes on. We don't wear the same clothes every day. Don't be stupid. Anyway, sorry, you're not stupid. But anyway, yes, we're just doing a bunch of videos today. So this topic now is um, Karen. Yes. How have you adjusted to being a new mother? I think I've adjusted very well, to tell you the truth. It wasn't easy at first because I didn't have a lot of experience with kids and I was never around kids and I have a lot of friends that don't unfortunately have kids. But it becomes a natural thing to just want to nurture and take care of someone. So once you kick that in and you get a little advice from Daddy Tim, you know exactly what you're doing. And actually I'm really blessed because Alan and Brandon are easy kids. They're fun, they're full of love, they listen to you. So if you tell them to do something, they do it. You don't get back talk, back talk um, no resistance, and they're just very good kids, so I'm, I'm really blessed in that area. So actually it's easy, and I love the hugs, I love the kisses, and I like the food requests, and um, I think I like that the most because it's cute. The other day, Alan put on the, the kitchen, uh, uh, you know, menu thing, he put uh, raspberry, he wants raspberry jelly, and he spelled it wrong, and I told him the correct spelling of raspberry, but I told him it was so cute that I'll leave it up there because I'll remember when I go to the grocery store, raspberry jelly, just because he spelled it wrong. But it, it's just darling. It, it's, it's, it's great. I and mean, Daddy it's a is an thing. enforcer. One thing that you have to make sure to do when you're the primary parent is make sure that you understand that you never want to make your spouse or your significant other Feel like they're playing second string to the children and you gang up on them with the children. So when she says something, any reasonable request, I jump right in and take the reins from her and make sure they understand that I'm in solidarity with her on what she's saying. Very important because they have to learn there's equal respect. And one thing I admire about my children, which everybody should work for with their children, they see no difference in her whatsoever in their birth mother. They don't just call her mom in a, in, a, in a gratuitous fashion, they call her mommy. And they hug her and kiss her and tell her they love her and they just, they're all over her. And when people see you know, us in public, she's just mom. And when they're there, they forget every trace of anything except this is her mother. So that bond had to be built by all parties involved. Karen had to do the most work because she never, ever, ever wanted children, nor to be around a man with children, had never held a baby until after we were married. So it was hard for her to have these people that she had to in interact with. And, you know, sometimes she failed. But, you know, I had to stand there and bridge the gap for everybody and explain to her what I knew from being a father and from being someone who was experienced with kids. The kids had to filter the anxiety that she sometimes had and not react to it or let it go to heart mm -hmm. to the point where they got an attitude. You're not my mother. They never, ever, mm -hmm. ever said that no matter what happened. They loved her right through it. I had to do the work to see both sides and make sure I was being a fair uh, uh, referee and, 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 and play between. Sometimes I had to mm -hmm. let her know that wasn't the right way to do it. Sometimes I told the boys, do not do that because it upsets mom. And everybody had to learn to find that middle ground. We successfully done it in a very short amount of time. And given how much she absolutely didn't want kids, that means anybody can do it. And I told her, when you married me, you married all three of us. There was nobody else standing there but us. And at the end of that ceremony, the boys came in and we were a new family. And it made a big difference in their lives. And, you know, uh, Karen did have a, uh, uh, her father at some point remarried after she was pretty much an adult and she had another woman who stood as a co-mother type of person. And it wasn't a good relationship. So she didn't understand that her relationship with my sons didn't have to be like that was in her life. But she's learned, you know, and you can't use the things that frustrated you growing up as a roadmap to how you're supposed to be. You have to remember how the things frustrated you to make sure you're not that. that. to someone else. Because while she told me about her childhood memories, I had to make her understand that you're setting my son's childhood memories with everything you do. And once she embraced that and said, oh wow, they do call me mom. 
They mm-hmm. never make me fuck them out their mothers. They never sass me. They love me. They kiss me. They hug me. I want their memories to be awesome. I'm actually their mom. Mm-hmm. You know, and bliss. So, work hard because a family is a family is That's a family right. no matter what components it's organized from. That's right. When you're living together under one roof, you have to be a family. Not, mm-hmm. I asked my husband, and those are his kids. No. She thought she was going to do that at first, but she soon found out there's no way that could work. Nope. So, from a perfect, newly minted mom. Well, hang in there. I mean, don't give up because, let me tell you, it's the best thing ever that happened in my life. There's such joy in their little faces, and I've gotten used to them asking questions because at first it used to bother me. They ask a lot of questions. They always listen to our conversations. Yeah, there's little ears there, so be careful what you say. And But the joy in just when I get that hug and when I get that kiss and when they call me mommy, it's okay. And, uh, whatever I have to do, I have to do. And they're listening to how them. they learn. Mm-hmm. I always tell, there's many women that I've heard say, I never allow a man around my children. Mm-hmm. I will not date, I will not marry, I will not anything until my children are over 18 and grown and leave the house. You're going, to have, you're going to unleash the dumbest people ever out into the world of broken people to try to figure out how to make love work. They won't know anything. Mm-hmm. My children speak because they heard me speak. They speak like me, they move like me, they think like me. How in the world could I not make them privy to what happens in our family for real so they can learn how to navigate the very headstrong women that they will have to encounter one day? Because society is changing. The roles are reversing. And most people come up in a, in a home where it's led by a woman, so the women expect to lead and the men expect to take a free ride on the women leading. Mm-hmm. I'm not that guy. So I'm teaching my sons the values of what proper balance between a man and a woman should be. So they need to hear the reality because they're going to have to live that reality as soon as they get of a dating and marrying age. So do not try to shield your kids because all you're doing is shielding them from reality and you're going to make their life much more difficult. They will fail for sure if they never see you with a man. They won't know what a man is. They won't know what a man isn't. They will make every possible mistake because they'll be led by the media showing them what is sexy. And that is not who they should be trying to make a relationship with. That explains most of the bad relationships today. People not having the values set at home correctly. Either because their mother or their father was in the wrong relationship or they shielded them from relationships completely. So please, take that to heart out of everything that was said in this video. Do not try to shield your kids. When I start dating, the first thing I want to do is have that woman meet my children, see if they like her and she likes them. Otherwise, I ain't gonna fall in love. You don't fall in love with somebody first and then after you so in love with them, you spring them on the kids and hope for the best. It's completely backward, but that's what people do. Mm-hmm. So, let's get it right. And let's understand that the kids are along for the ride. If you meet somebody and then they don't work out and you have to unmeet them, the kids have to go for that same ride. And they got to detach from them just like you do and you start over. Because all their life, when they start dating, they're going to try this person, it doesn't work out, they got to decompress and try somebody else. They learn that by watching you do it. It's much safer than them getting involved with a bunch of different crazy people. And how and you react pain. to that relationship, if it's positive or negative when it ends, also, they're going to take hold of that, and it teaches them if you, okay, it didn't work out, we're parting our ways, I wish him well, or I wish her well, they're going to use that as their Bible for how they relate to people when they have a relationship because they saw mommy or daddy do it. Kids are resilient. They change classrooms every year. They got to mm-hmm. lose that set of best friends and start a new set. You move from this house to that house. They got to make new friends, new surroundings. They don't break and fall apart. And just because you think it's the worst thing in the world when you broke up, the kids aren't harmed by that. They may miss that person. They may like certain things about them, but they'll get over it, and they'll like the next person. So don't use your kids as a shield for why you can't date and have a life. You're not fair to yourself. You're definitely even more unfair to them. So please accept that and really take that to heart. Bye. Bye.